John Bennett, Fund Manager of Henderson European Focus Trust. Now let's start broadly. You've upped your gearing in recent times, perhaps with the expectation of a rally in European equities. How is this playing out? Um, no rally. Uh, the usual sort of uh, seasonal effect, the Santa rally, all that sort of stuff, didn't really happen. But we didn't really, we didn't, we've never really been into market timing. And I, you know, I, like uh, most of the world, I have no skill set in market timing. Um, but a lot of the world still thinks it does have a skill set in market timing. I have no skill set in market timing. The, the increase in gearing was quite modest. It was from low single digit to high single digit, which is where it is at the moment. It's 8 or 9 percent at the moment. Um, and we, we don't see the conditions to allow gearing to go into double figures as a percentage of NAV. OK, now investment themes feature in your portfolios, and we've talked about the smart car, <coughs> we've talked about pharmaceuticals. Are there any new ones? No, um, they're not. And you know, the important thing about one of the important things, features of investment themes, is they don't come along that often. A good investment theme will not come along every year, and a good investment theme will last a long time. You know, pharma is not a new theme, it's five years old. Brace, brace. It could be another five years uh, uh, of me boring on about pharma. So good, compelling investment themes don't come along every year. It's important that when they do come along, you identify them and you back them. Yeah, on the smart car, it seems uh, there are more investors who are adopting this concept. So I'd like to know whether the influx reduces the attractiveness of, of themes. Only to the extent that where share prices have performed. Um, I think it is a wee bit more popular as a, as a theme, but actually if you look at the second half of 2014, the likes of Continental in Germany, the likes of Valio, um, didn't actually perform that well. So had they spiked and gone to multiples that made us uncomfortable, then we would be uncomfortable and we'd probably take a bit of money out of them, but that really didn't happen. Valio has performed quite well in, in, in recent months, but that was after a a pretty dull spell in, in the summer. So I don't see it as being you know, popular to the extent of euphoria. It's still, still a pretty high beta sector, so when you get a sell-off in Europe, it usually sells off. Okay, finally, John, I'd like to know whether the team are unearthing any opportunities in emerging Europe, and if they are, what your attitude towards these opportunities are? At the moment, there's no real emerging Europe. It's, we've got submerging Europe. Um, uh, which is a, you know, a real concern, actually, of, of, of mine. So um, emerging Europe tends to refer to things to the east of Germany, which I imagine is what you're talking about. No thank you to Russia. Although I'm a never-say-never never investor, um, I probably have said never throughout my career uh, to Russia, and I don't see myself changing that. And in fact, whether I go to Budapest or, or Poland, in my career, I've very rarely dabbled there. Um, I don't particularly feel we've got an edge or a skill set, and I've never really quite liked the, there might be a wee, wee bit of liquidity on the way in, but there tends not to be um, on the way out. Very open-minded to a Poland, for example, but I've got enough opportunity uh, in Western Europe that I don't feel I need to go there. John Bennett, thank you.